طيب نبدا ان شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم ايفريبادي تو ذس سيشن ان ذا كورنيا سيريس تو ذا وندرلاند اي لايك تو ويلكم بروفيسور طارق قطامش ذا انترناشونال ستار اوف كورنيا um and uh, all of you uh, know him very well no need to repeat the introduction about him and i would like to welcome as well dr bara qubaisi uh, uh, cornea specialist as well um uh, who, who will moderate uh, the uh, the session um i'd like to um uh, thank all of you for attending this session um and please please uh, please be with us until the end of the session Um, Dr. Tariq, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I will share my screen now. Yes, please, Dr. Tariq. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is my great pleasure to participate in this uh, series of lectures through the Sinjab Academy. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I would like to first of all to to thank uh, generously uh, Dr. Mazin for his great efforts and uh, he is taking part of his precious time uh, to transfer knowledge through these lectures to the young generations and, and uh, I would like to thank him very much uh, for this opportunity to be with you today and also I am uh, honored to have uh, Dr. Bara al Qubesi as a moderator for this lecture. So, nothing. So I will speak about introduction to the make the masterpiece of endothelial keratoplasty. In the past, when we have just a disease in the endothelium with the whole cornea healthy, for example, in cases of uh, endothelial decompensation, the most common causes are uh, pseudophagic bullous keratopathy and Fuchs endothelial dystrophy. In the past days, if we have just this problem, we don't have at that time, apart from replacing the whole cornea, doing penetrating keratoplasty in spite of knowing that the whole cornea is normal apart from these tiny uh, endothelial cells. As you know, the full thickness graph has a lot of complications. It, you may have an expulsive hemorrhage, the worst case scenario, if you are working open sky technique, you may have iris prolapse during the operation or post-operatively. You may face wound leak and shallow anterior chamber. You may have, for no reason, epithelial defects. You may have disrupted ocular surface, dry eye, uh, problem of the stitches, stitch abscess, uh, post-operative glaucoma, Uh, large amounts of astigmatism in spite of the uh, good technique. You may have graft failure if you, ha if you have a, a poor graft quality. And the graft rejection is about 25 times more than endothelial keratoplasty. And the globe is weak. If you have received trauma after penetrating keratoplasty, you may have uh, a lot of troubles as if you have ruptured globe. And if you are planning to do, for example, triple penetrating keratoplasty and open sky extra capsule cut extraction, this is a very hazardous operation. And the control of the capsule during capsulorexis is difficult. And doing cataract in open sky technique is somewhat difficult if you compare it with the triple fecal demic, for example. Even if you pass all these obstacles and complications and you have this beautiful outcome, you have to stay for at least one year to reach this beautiful outcome. So the treatment of endothelial decompensation by penetrating keratoplasty, in my opinion, is not the best option. Recently, if we have the same problem, just a disease in endothelium, we can replace this diseased endothelium with another healthy endothelium and leaving the whole cornea untouched. This is a magic solution, as you see, with great advantages. So thanks for these tiny, fragile demic tissues that allows us to make a revolution in our management of endothelial decompensation. To start with, demic in general 
means this membrane endothelial keratoplasty. It has more, it has four main steps. Donor tissue preparation by stripping this much membrane from the donor cornea, loading this uh, demic graft in uh, a loading uh, 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 glass or glass pipette, and then preparing the patient's eye by removing the diseased endothelial cells, what we call dysmatorexis, and then injecting the new healthy demic tissue in the patient's eye, making orientation and then unfolding and then fixing to the stroma by an air bubble or a gas bubble. So this is DMEC in summary. Before going through the details of DMEC, I want to give an idea, a very short idea about the types and evolution of recent endothelial keratoplasts. As you know, DMEC is one operation of a group of operations called endothelial keratoplasty. So the, uh, we have first the DSEK, D -S -E -K, or DSEK, D -S -A -E -K. This uh, is an operation in which we transplant the endothelium, this membrane, and about 150 to 200 lenticule of stroma. So DSEK, or the manual technique, this stripping endothelial keratoplasty, is done by using uh, mounting the donor into artificial anterior chamber, and then by special dissectors, manually separating the cornea into two layers until we get a DSEC graft. This is called DSEC, or the manual technique. If you are uh, uh, fortunate and have a macrocreatum, you can do it in an automated way. We call it desmet stripping automated endothelial keratoplasty, in which you use the microkeratom to, to cut automatically or by automated means the cornea into two parts. You take the posterior part for the disease. So this operation, uh, it considered the godfather of recent endothelial keratoplasty. Then after this operation has gained a lot of popularity and make a revolution of the endothelial management, uh, we, we, we come with another operation, which is the MEC. The MEC, as I have mentioned, stands for Desmet Membrane Endothelial Cataplasty. As you see, it is only replacing the diseased endothelial cells by another layer of Desmet and endothelial cells, and there is no stroma at all in the operation. So uh, this, we can do this stripping manually by... Uh, 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 strip, stripping this membrane from, from the stroma, donor stroma, by two different means. I will go through this in just a few minutes. When uh, DMEC, of course, has a lot of advantages over DZEC. The first of all, DMEC has a lower rejection rates if compared to DZEC. For example, the DMEC rate of DMEC is 11 times less than DZEC. The MEC has a very fast visual recovery if compared to the ZEC. And also due to absence of uh, an interface, the MEC has a better optical quality. And uh, as you know, the presence of the stroma in the ZEC make what we call it hyperopic shift. There is no hyperopic shift in the MEC since we don't have any stroma. Of course, injecting the DMEC roll needs a smaller wound than injecting a DZEC graft. And there is also a great advantage of the MEC, especially in developing countries, that we can split the cornea into two grafts. We take the desmet membrane endothelial complex, we do the MEC, and we can take the stroma doing that. We can't do this with the ZEC because the stroma layer remaining is not in the proper uh, thickness. Uh, a very important item also in the developing countries that the DMEC instruments are very basic, are very basic and inexpensive in contrast to the ZEC. The ZEC, uh, you have to have artificial anterior chamber, you have to have uh, the microkeratome, special instruments for uh, insertion techniques. So it is very easy to start doing the MEC because you don't have uh, to opt obtain certain instruments. Since the introduction of DMEC, the, the people who are doing DMEC feel uh, some jealousy toward this 
uh, newly developing operation that they make with its fantastic advantage. And they realized that the, the, the problem in their technique is uh, the, the, the thickness of the stroma. So they tried to, to, to compete with the MEC. So they introduced a new technique, which is called ultra thin DZEC, in which only a, a little part of the stroma is transplanted, not more than 100 micron. And uh, they, success, they have success and they have some comparable results to the MEC, but the MEC still is the gold standard for the endothelial decompensation. As you see, the MEC, it is just a substitution procedure, but the ZEC, it is an addition procedure. So another fourth operation, which uh, didn't gain much popularity is what we call it BDEC. BDEC stands for pre desmet endothelial keratoplast, in which we transplant the endothelium desmet complex in addition to dual layer. Dual layer gives some strength to the DMEC graft and may, may, may make it easier in unfolding. But to have the BDEC graft, you should do a big bubble type one in the donor, which is not as easy as you think. So this operation, didn't gain the popularity, but still it is present uh, in our armamentarium of uh, endothelial EK techniques. So this was a brief history uh, about the evolution of recent endothelial keratoblasts. So we come back to our operation, the MEC. So uh, from this short uh, uh, history, the MEC is the only surgical procedure that provides a true anatomic exchange of diseased endothelium and desmet membrane with healthy donor tissue. So in spite of all these advantages of the MEC, but still there is some barriers against learning the operation or some obstacles uh, because in spite of being popular, but still some surgeon are, a surgeon are afraid to go through the MEC because it is a challenging technique. Yes, I agree. It is somewhat difficult technique, but any difficult technique can be overcome by making a lot of operation and there is a learning curve and then you will pass learning curve. But the learning curve of the MEC is somewhat uh, tough if compared to the ZEC. Another uh, problem in learning the operation that you may have iatrogenic graft failure. You may be having uh, peripheral tears in the graft during preparation, you may have difficulty in unfolding the graft, losing cells. So you will be always uh, worry about the, the price of the graft, who will pay for this loss. So this is another obstacle. Uh, another third obstacle is what we call the, the somewhat uh, rebubbling rate. Uh, for example, in some DMA cases, uh, it depends upon the, 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 the surgeon experience, you may need to, uh, to, to, to make uh, rebubbling, rebubbling uh, if the, the graft is detached. So due to all these uh, reasons, I think these are somewhat obstacles against learning the, the MEC, but they are not complications. They are just obstacles. But if you go through the MEC, you will be amazed about the, 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 wonder, the, the wonderful outcome you will get. So the DMEC technique, I will go through the DMEC technique in the next uh, about uh, 25 minutes. Uh, first of all, we will speak about donor tissue preparation. Then we will speak uh, about donor uh, our DMEC injectors, how to transfer the DMEC tissue from the uh, tail to the patient's eye. And we will speak about an important issue, how to prepare the patient's eye to accept this new graft, and then uh, how to inject it safely in the anterior chamber without uh, trauma. And as you know, the DMEC tissue has uh, two faces in the cilium and the other with this membrane. So you have to make the proper orientation in the anterior chamber. Then you start unfolding the DMEC roll. And finally, you have to fix the graft against stroma in what we call it graft tamponade with either using air or SF6 gas. So donor tissue preparation, my advice, you have to start your learning curve in the wet lab. There is no way 
and to not justify it that you start your first cases in the human cases. No, you have to start in the weight lab first. Another important point, don't waste your learning curve in DALC for nothing. If you are doing DALCs, a lot of DALCs, don't use this stripping technique for DALC. But imagine that you have a DMIC case and start training yourself on how to strip this membrane safely. This is a very good opportunity with no stress upon you because you are doing actually DALC, not DMIC. So don't waste these cases in learning at least half of the DMIC operation. The instruments, as I have mentioned, very simple instruments, either for donor tissue preparation or for graft injection and unfolding. These are ordinary cataract instruments, corneal instruments. It's not specific for the make except one instrument only, which is the reverse Sinisky hook, which uh, you will be using it uh, in doing this matrixes, either you are doing the make or that. So a very basic instrument, you can go and work uh, very uh, comfortably with any uh, anterior segment instruments. A great advice also, you should uh, choose uh, the older tissue for the make graft preparation. As you see, this is a young donor and this is an old donor. Imagine this young donor with very tight roll and this old donor with, with wide roll. What do you think? Which role of this will be unfold easily in the anterior chamber? Of course, the answer is this one. This one will be a behave very friendly in the anterior chamber and it will unfold very easily. So you have to choose the old graph. So to summarize the criteria for donor tissue uh, selection, first of all, as I have mentioned, the age, at least for the beginners, it should be above 60 years. The, the donor uh, cornea should be from a from fecic globe, not pseudo fecic, to avoid the scars of previous feco. This may be a precursor to to uh, uh, the mac tissue tears. Uh, the endothelial cell count should be at least twenty four hundred cells per square millimeter, because as you know. Uh, even if you are doing a perfect DMIC, you will lose at least 25 to 30% of these cells in the operation. So you have to start with a large count to end with, uh, with, with, with the functioning graph. Finally, I prefer to use non-diabetic uh, donors because diabetic donors has a very fragile dysmic membrane and very easily tear. This is a, a, a three minute video showing my technique of uh, making donor uh, tissue preparation or the make graft preparation. I usually use a vacuum punch because I want the, the punch to hold the cornea for me because I want both my hands are free and I want the cornea to be fixed. So using any vacuum punch you have, put your uh, donor cornea. The first step is we want to make mark only. We don't want to cut any tissue now. We are just touching the endothelium to make a triband blue stain for the future the make graft. It is usually between seven to eight millimeter and the standard graft is about 7.5 millimeter. It depends upon the patient's uh, anterior chamber and corneal diameter. So you see now, this is uh, the, 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 the mark for the future the make graft I want. We start in the periphery first by making very superficial cuts in this membrane. We don't want to incise through the stroma or do as layer. We make a very superficial scratches. You see, I am even dragging this strip. And then I make another staining with triband blue to delineate. The blue strip is the stroma and the, this clear edge is the edge of this. Membrane. Then I put PSS and I start by a golf knife start elevating this membrane under magnification. And I should work, as you see, under a large amount of BSS because uh, the BSS makes stripping easier. And if you are stripping a dry dismet membrane, it will be having a lot of tears. After making this preliminary step, we start stripping by, by the usual uh, tying forceps, start stripping the first quarter and then stripping another coating and leaving the center fixed. Don't, uh, we, our aim is not to make the graft floating. 
we just want to make a stripping of the peripheral cortex and to leave the graft in the center attached for for the refination. And then after making sure that most of the graft is free, we go and make our terrifination. We terrify now our graft. Uh, as you see, I'm, I'm, I'm making some pressure over the terrifying, and I will remove the, the peripheral rim. You see the peripheral rim? And then I will make another uh, assurance that all edges are free, just passing uh, a fine spatula under the desmet membrane, very gently to elevate again the desmet membrane edge. Uh, if you are following me, until now, I didn't touch. This is the first time to touch the graft. You see, this is the first time to touch the graft. It is almost all peeled, just in the center only. And then I will leave it here in the stroma and put triban blue for about two minutes, not more than two minutes. And then I put it in a petri dish and I will start sucking it and loading it in the glass pipette. And you see, visually this technique in my hands take about from 10 to 15 minutes. This is a three minutes video with, uh, with uh, edition, but usually take from 10 to 15 minutes maximum. The drawback of this technique is the possibility of desmet membrane tears. As you see, for example, you see when you have a peripheral desmet membrane tear, uh, this tear may extend to the center and it may jeopardize the integrity of your graft. So you have to be very careful in this technique, and you have to manage any peripheral tear immediately, turning it into rounded, rounded uh, 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 cut. Exactly the same principle of posterior capsular tear, we, we turn it into a rounded uh, cut tears to avoid extension. So turning it into a rounded uh, edge to avoid extension to the center of the graft. So oh, that's why we started section from periphery to deal with these uh, 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 tears. So the ideal preparation technique should have the following criteria. It should be tissue sparing without touching the endothelial cells. It should be easy to perform and to learn for almost every average surgeon. Uh, we, we should use uh, only standard instruments and it should be rapidly performed. And it should be highly reproducible in a standardized fashion. All these are the, the ideal uh, criteria for any technique, because as you know, we have a lot of techniques uh, for doing graft preparation. Another very important uh, criteria is, is what we call selective staining of a stromal side of desmet membrane, because uh, we hence avoiding any contact of the staining dye with the vulnerable endothelial cells. So I have started learning another new technique, which is called the liquid bubble technique for the make graft vibration. Uh, this is introduced by Dr. Peter Schumann and colleagues in Sulzbach, Germany. This technique depends on the uh, knowing our surgical anatomy of the limbus. This is the iris base, and this is Schwalbe's line and Schlem canal and desmet membrane here. So. Uh, we start now uh, doing the technique. Uh, first of all, we go by a sharp uh, uh, super blade or sharp MVR under the iris base, making sharp dissection to make a very small tunnel. And after finishing this sharp dissection, the Schwalbe's line is very adherent. We go with a blunt spatula making a dissection under Schwalbe's line, under we find our spatula goes uh, under the desmet membrane, sub, sub desmet membrane space, which is uh, 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 not adherent. And then we go with uh, a, a, spat, a, a cannula, attach it to uh, Triban Blue, and then we seal this tunnel from outside by a, by a macro sponge, and then we inject, you see, we inject Triban Blue with some force, this will make a fluid wave, which will make a stripping of this membrane from limbus to limbus in just a few seconds, as you see. This technique may take only three to four minutes if compared by the other technique. And then you go and make, uh, make cutting uh, by trifination. And then you will be having, you will be astonished that you will be having your graft immediately 
without any possibility of having any preferators and with the advantage of the selective tissue staining from this membrane site. So whatever the technique you use, you should master one technique and you stick to it, whether the liquid bubble technique or the classic technique. When we finish preparation, we will be having different types of demic rolls according to the elastic content of this membrane, according to the age. So these are the different types. The first one is wide roll. You see, this is a very wide roll. It's about uh, the rolls are not so tight upon each other. And this is a double scroll. This is a very well-known, famous double scroll, as you see. And this is a triangular roll. This, sums, this is mainly in PDEC preparation. You will find the graph taking a triangular configuration like this. And this sometimes in a very old patients and very low elastic content, you will find that the, the make roll has a disc like, and if you push it with some uh, burst of BSS, it will start folding. And this is the worst type of the make graft rolls, what we call the tight roll. You see it's very tight, it's like cigarette-like roll, which, uh, which, which is very uh, uh, tight. And of course, it will be very difficult to unfold in the anterior chamber. So if you compare these two tight roll with these two wide rolls, it is obvious that the, the, the tight roll will have difficult unfolding if compared to the easy unfolding of the wide roll. Again, if you compare the, the tight scroll with the double scroll, of course, double scroll will be unfolding very easy. So I advise you that you should choose donor age above 60 to avoid these types of uh, uh, tight demic roll, which is usually with young age. Uh, after finishing with the demic breath preparation, we want to transfer this delicate tissue into the patient's eye. You cannot pick it in a forceps and just push it in the anterior chamber. No, you have to transfer it in a, a proper way, uh, respecting the tissue, respecting the nuclear cells. So we have two ways of doing this either using the intraocular lens cartridge, uh, loading the graft under BSS as if it is an intraocular lens and uh, adjusting the graft in the anterior part of the cartridge and you will be uh, now ready for injecting in the anterior chamber. The second way which I prefer is what we call the non-touch technique. We have a glass pipette. This is a glass pipette from Goida. Of course, I have no financial interest in any of goider preparation, but I am using goider glass pipette. By this white part, we suck the graft without touching it. And with this narrow part, we inject it in the anterior chamber. So we suck the graft, as you see, without touching it at all from the white part under BSS. And then we close from the other side by another syringe. And then we have now the graft ready to be transferred to the patient eye. So you have to transfer your graft meticulously without damaging any endothelial cells as much as you can. So we go now for patient preparation. You have to improve your visualization by removing the epithelium. It helps a lot. And you have to do a proper wound construction. You have to have all your wounds, uh, the internal lips of your wounds outside the dysmatorexes. And you should have your dysmatorexes about one millimeter larger than the, 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 the demic graft to have a small strip of bare stroma. Uh, we don't want to have any override of the demic graft over the remnants, rem remnants of this membrane. So this is how to do the job. We make, uh, uh, for example, nine millimeter mark for this matrixes, and then we do three paracentesis uh, I prefer doing three paracentesis to deal with the graft from different angles. And then we make the main wound. The main wound ranges between 2.4 to 2.7 millimeter. With this depends upon your injecting device. For the goida glass pipette, I usually make a wound 2.7 millimeter. So another very important step is doing dysmatorexes. We want to implant our new dysmat membrane over over, over a smooth surface of stroma. So you have to remove the diseased uh, dysmet membrane very carefully in a very neat way. Don't leave any tags and don't 
uh, interrupt the stromal fibers to make rough surface. If you are using air, it will be a very easy visualization, but the air always collapses. The anterior chamber will not be stable. So this you are removing it by a Sinsky hook. But if you are using a cohesive viscoelastic, you will be having a stable anterior chamber, but the, the visualization is not as uh, clear as using air. So this is the step of this matrix. Again, I will do it in high magnification. You do first what we call uh, scoring. You score this membrane using reverse Sinsky hook, and then you will start make stripping, stripping from outside to the center, uh, gently without uh, elevating the stroma, just to elevate this membrane. And then you have it in the center, and then you uh, peel it out uh, of the wound and uh, remove it by, for example, uh, McPherson's uh, forceps. And then you have to check your work, and you have to ensure that you have complete stripping and you don't have any remnants of this membrane, which may be a source of recurrence if you put the graft over it. Another important point of preparation, as you know, we usually leave the, the, the patient full of air bubble or gas 20% SP6. So we have to do an inferior iridectomy, either to do it by YAG laser one week before the operation to avoid fiber interaction, or to do it intraoperatively. I usually do it intraoperatively using vitreous cutter, making the cutting rate at 100 and the vacuum 250, and going from the under surface of the iris uh, to, to, to make a very small uh, cut in the inferior iris. This small PI will help to prevent pupillary block since I'm leaving the air, the anterior chamber full of air. So this is another uh, two videos for making inferior iridectomy. But the drawback of this technique is you, at some times you may have a bleeding Watch carefully in this bad case. You have a lot of bleeding suddenly. So the bleeding has a lot of fibrin. The combination of fibrin with the MEG graft is very bad combination. So you have to be patient. You have to make perfect hemostasis. And because blood and the fibrin are enemies to the MEG roll unfolding, because as you know, fibrin is very sticky. And once it is stick to the MEG graft, it will... Uh, make the unfolding maneuvers very difficult or even impossible. So we have to make a proper hemostasis, wash out all remains of blood and fibrin, and then inject your graft and continue your operation. Uh, we come now to the next step, which is injection of the demic graft in the anterior chamber. If you are using the intraocular lens cartilage, you should use anterior chamber maintainer because the intraocular lens cartilage, as you see, has a little amount of uh, fluid. If you go inside the eye, the anterior chamber will collapse immediately. So you have to make a space by artificial anterior chamber maintainer because the little amount of fluid, and then you inject the graft very gently in the anterior chamber. And before going out, it is very important to go out by the maintainer first because we want the anterior chamber pressure to be low. If you leave the anterior chamber pressure very high, the graft will come after you because the graft, it acts like a jellyfish. It, it swims in the, in the BSS and the aqueous. So you, you should leave your injector while you are going out with the tension soft. But if you are using glass pipette, as you see, the glass pipette has a lot of fluid. So there is no need to put artificial anterior chamber, to put anterior chamber maintainer. You got to go by the your glass pipette and inject your graft safely in the anterior chamber. And as you will see now, I will try to lower the tension first here before going out. You see, I'm trying to lower the tension to make safe withdrawal of my glass pipette. So you, we have now the graft in the anterior chamber. We want to unfold it to fix it in the stroma. Before unfolding, there is another very, very important step which is graft orientation. Because if you implant your graft in upside down direction, you will be having primary graft failure, no way, because you are putting the graft in the uh, wrong orientation. 
So thanks God that all the macros behave the same behavior. When you leave any demicrol, whatever the age, whatever the, the size, whatever the shape, it behaves the same manner. The endothelium is out and this metamembrane is in, in 100% of the cases. So this important information will help us to make a proper orientation. So this is a proper orientation if you are injecting your demic graft in the anterior chamber. You should have the endothelium facing to the iris and you should have the two tissue scrolls facing toward the stroma. So when you put it like this in the anterior chamber and unfold it and start injecting air, you will be having the endothelium facing aqueous, which is the proper orientation. But if you inject your demic graft in this way, having the scrolls facing to iris and the endothelium facing stroma, you will be injecting air and having the demic graft in the wrong orientation. So this is the proper orientation uh, as I have shown to you uh, in which we aim to inject the demic graft and to make it in this orientation before unfolding. How to make sure that I am in the proper orientation? We have a lot of things to make sure. One of these is the Mutsori sign uh, passing a spatula above the demic graft if the spatula this appears under the fold. This means that the graft is in proper orientation. If the spatula uh, doesn't uh, disappear in the fold, this means that the folds are in a backward way. This is called the demic graft uh, Mutsori sign. Another important uh, tool, if you have in your OS, uh, operating room uh, OCT attached to your microscope. So you will be having the privilege of uh, an instantaneous OCT to, to see the direction of your scrolls. So this, for example, is an inverted graph. You see the scrolls are looking back. So this is the wrong orientation. Now it is in the proper orientation because the scrolls are looking up. So this is a very important tool if you have it in your operating room. The most common way of orientation is what we call the s stromal stamp or, or S-mark. Uh, why, why letter S? Because letter S, uh, when it is uh, in, in its uh, position, it is S, but when it is flipped, it is not S, it is two. And L also may be used and F. These are asymmetrical letters. When flipped, they give you another meaning than the original letter. So the most common uh, letter for orientation is the S mark. So during your pre preparation to do the S mark, you will be having the whole tissue aside. You see, I am getting the whole tissue aside and I will do now a stromal window by a skin. This is a skin biopsy punch. I will make a stromal window just in the stroma, the desmet membrane, all here. And when I do this window, I will let the desmet membrane to float again back. You see, I make a window, but leave it in place and then float the desmet membrane again back and then when it comes back again over the stroma, I can now flip my graft and open this stromal window from this membrane side. And I will start after make proper dynes, I start drawing letter S. If you don't have an S mark, you can do it by just a sinistry hook and draw by yourself the letter S. But if you are fortunate, you may have the S mark. This is an S mark from Moria. You will just make the stamp immediately. At the end of the operation, you are supposed to see this S mark. If you see uh, number two, this means that your graph is, is inverted. So for example, as you see in this video clip, this is not S, this is two. So the graph is inverted. So I have to correct this situation, making correction. And now you will be having the graph in a proper orientation and you will be able to see your S mark. How I uh, flip an inverted graph, this is a very simple technique, just to direct short burst of BSS along the iris plane. This will make a turbulence in the anterior chamber that will make the graft to flip. You see this animation, just injecting fluid until the flap is inverted. But if you inject, 
directly to the graph, you will push it to the angle. I will, and it will not be able to flip it. So you have to direct your fluid uh, to the iris plane to make the turbulence that allow for uh, uh, inversion of the graph. After making sure that you have the, your graph in the proper orientation, you start unfolding, which is really the, the most difficult part of the operation uh, to unfold the make graft in the anterior chamber. We have a lot of techniques. Uh, some surgeons prefer certain technique, others prefer others, but anyhow, you have to be familiar with all techniques because sometimes you may find this technique is more suitable to be used for this configuration, the other technique for, so you have to learn about all techniques and use it whenever you, you need it. So the first technique is a, a very simple technique. It's called tapping technique. You just tap over the cornea. This will create a fluid wave, which allow you to unfold safely that they make graft with indirect touch to the graft. This is a, there is no trauma to the graft. I'm just tapping over the cornea and this fluid wave will help me open the graft. Another technique, is what we call the Drismer technique or the pinch and unfold. You pinch the graft here. Of course, the anterior chamber should be very shallow. You pinch the graft here by one hand, one spatula, and then by the other spatula, you will start tapping. You see, shallowing, and you start tapping other spatula. So this is called the pinch and unfold technique. If you have one, fo one fold is resistant to, to unfolding and the other is, is okay. The third technique, which I prefer too much, is what we call the, the bubble in the roll technique. You inject a small bubble in the roll, and using this bubble as if it is a third hand in the anterior chamber to, to unfold the, 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 the make graft, as you see, gently, and making some shallowing and some maneuvers from the corner surface, you will be able to unfold the make graft. Another technique is just repeated fluid injection may help opening especially some tight roll, just repeated injections in certain directions will help you open a tight roll. And sometimes you may use the spatula from this membrane side to unfold the graft or uh, mainly to center, center the graft. I'm using the spatula in sometimes for centration of the graft, but of course I should use it from the this membrane side, not from the anterior side. So change your tactics along the way use all your techniques you got with whatever situation at hand. The criteria for success to have a successful operation or successful unfolding, you should have uh, some uh, prerequisites. The visualization, you should be able to see quite well by peeling the epithelium and by making proper staining of this membrane. I want to emphasize here the striband blue is for staining of the graft to see it during the operation. It has no role in orientation. But on the other hand, the S stamp is the gentian violet mark is aimed for orientation, not visualization. So we have two things, triband blue staining for good visualization of the graph, and we have the S stamp for good orientation. You have to have uh, the proper uh, uh, size of the graph tailored to your patient's eye. And you, as I have told, you have to choose uh, the proper criteria for donor graft to have a wide role. And you have to be patient, of course, at the end of the day. This is a magnified view of the bubble in the roll technique. You inject a small bubble. You see very gently small bubble in the, in the roll. And you start tapping, as you see, gently over the cornea. These bubbles will start uh, open the folds and with some shallowing, we always, during the make technique, we want to have shallow anterior chamber. If you have a, a deep anterior chamber, the role will not be, uh, will be difficult to unfold. So shallowing is a very important in any uh, unfolding technique. So all of the techniques rely on external forces or bubbles to manipulate the tissue into the correct position and conformation. Uh, so there is, these are some guidelines for unfolding technique. The anterior chamber should be shallow, as I have mentioned, but not flat. A flat anterior chamber is not required. We, have, we want to have a shallow anterior chamber. A shallow anterior chamber allows the iris act as a third finger to keep the graft from rolling back upon itself. 
use short jets of fluid. Don't inject too much fluid. Short jets of fluid and tapping on the corneal surface to open the graft. It is best to maintain gross centration of the graft while unfolding it because sometimes if you leave the graft, it may go to the angle and sometimes it will be stuck in the angle. So I prefer to make the graft in the middle, center it, and then start unfolding it. In addition to centration, of course, orientation is of great importance. Positioning, if you compare the make graft to the Z graft, it is completely different. You can't push a make graft where you want it to go, but you have to lead it. You can't push a make graft, but you have to lead it. Use physics. This requires thinking about the physics of fluid and the pressure as you work with this tissue. This is the last step of the operation after unfolding of the whole graft and with proper orientation and proper centration, you go with uh, a small bubble under the graft and fixing it to the stroma. And then you go with another big bubble to make the final step of uh, almost 90% fill of the anterior chamber with either air or with SF6, 20%. And this is the letter S, as you see, you are quite sure that you are going home with your graft in the proper orientation. So thanks for this S marks that will allow us to feel comfortable that we are doing the job in the proper uh, orientation. Postoperatively, the patient should lie supine for about two to three days to have the tamponade. And this is a post-operative treatment. And in, in, in short, you use contact lens for 10 days until the epithelium is completely healed and smooth. Topical antibiotics for 10 days and lubricants for one month, no more. And you should use strong uh, brednisolone acetate eye drops five times per day uh, for one month to, to, to be tapered uh, for five months, five months. And then after this five months, you should use uh, fluoromethylone eye drops twice daily for years to guard against graft rejection. So this is some uh, 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 pictures of the outcome. This is, was a case of treble thecodemic. You see after three days and after seven days, the cornea is crystal clear, the anterior chamber is stable, the, there is no reaction, the, 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 there is no astigmatism, no sutures, the, everything is okay within few days. Another example, you see the cornea is compact by OCT, bubble is still there and the cornea is almost crystal clear from second day. And this was the interoperative view. You see this is the interoperative view and this is the second day postoperative. Another two example with a great outcome, very, very fast recovery as if you are doing actually a case of FACO. It is not a keratoplasty any, any way. It is just uh, 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 as if it is a case of FACO with a very rapid and very, uh, quite uh, post-operative course. Another two cases you see the after the operation, before the operation, the lot of fold this membrane. After the operation, the cornea is crystal clear and the air bubble is still there. Another two examples of how beautiful the 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 the, the, the outcome of the met. You see, you see this case also after a few days, and you, you can see also the S mark. The it, it, it may sometimes it stays for weeks or months. So uh, this beautiful outcome uh, couldn't be achieved without this uh, uh, wonderful DMEC tissues. Uh, if you compare this with uh, the penetrating keratoplasty, there is no way of comparison between these two operations. So at the end, as I always say, uh, you have to choose between uh, the, the, the easy full thickness graft with its uh, lot of complication or between the, the challenging DMEC technique with its marvelous outcome. You will be astonished and amazed about the outcome. So DMEC is a very difficult and challenging technique. I agree with you. I think that if surgeons give it serious try, they will be amazed at how rewarding it is to master DMEC. This is my contacts, my email account, my Facebook, my YouTube. I have a lot of my videos on my YouTube channel. And of course, I know that the learning curve is tough. And if any one of you want to start, I will be uh, behind you for any assistant as much as I can. Again, I would like to thank very much Dr. Mazin Singab, the 
the founder of this academy for making taking part a lot of his part of his time for dedication and continuous education for young generation and i am honored to be uh, with him today through this platform and i would like to thank you all for your kind uh, watching and listening and i am ready for uh, for any uh, for any question thank you all thank you dr uh, professor Sharif Qatamish from egypt for this wonderful lecture as usual very informative uh, I really thank you, Dr. Sinjab, for uh, this opportunity. I learned a lot, and I think all of the audience uh, now can master this technique. Really, I have attended a lot of lectures about this topic, but I think this is the, and I'm not lying, this is the simplest and best lecture I ever attended. So thank you, Dr. Uh, Patamish, again. Uh, I would uh, take some questions right now. So uh, uh, one of the doctors is asking, are you doing PIs with cutters in phacic and pseudophacic eyes? If yes, how can we avoid trauma traumatic cataract in phacic patients? Yes, this is a good question. Uh, for, uh, for, of course, for, for uh, pseudophacic cases, there is no problem. You can pass your uh, vitreous cutter under the iris with, uh, with the hole of the cutter up. Uh, no problem at all, but if you are doing it in uh, a case with the uh, lens, take a case, I do the reverse way. I go by the cutter from above the iris and making the hole down and cutting a very small uh, part of the iris. So I will not risk to pass my cutter under the iris in the presence of uh, crystalline lens. And, and, one if you also... that, if, and, and if you have the chance of doing uh, a YAG laser iridotomy, uh, before the operation, but this needs uh, uh, somewhat clear corneas and somewhat uh, thin iris, not a thick iris as in our region. And you should do it at least one week before the operation because the fibrin reaction may, may jeopardize your unfolding techniques. So you have to do this step. If you are afraid to do it by vitreous cutter, do it by YAG laser before the operation. Uh, also, uh, a second related uh, question. Do you routinely perform iridotomies? Yes, I routinely perform iridotomy uh, because I am, as, you, uh, as you, I, I will explain this more. There are two uh, 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 schools for managing of, of air bubbles. One school which I belong to, I make a full uh, 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 full air bubble, almost 95%. I, uh, of course, I have to insist on doing inferior PI to not to make uh, to make a bibliotic block. Another school, uh, they do uh, a very big bubble also with the tension may reach up to 40 and they leave the patient outside the OR for minutes. about 30, 40 minutes without any PI, and then let the patient come again and decrease the bubble size to about uh, 50%. So they are depending on the first 40 minutes for tamponade. So this uh, will not do, uh, will not do, uh, they are not doing the PI. For myself, I am doing the other technique, and I am taking part of, from this technique. I When I put my air bubble, for example, at the first, it will be 100%. I leave it for five, seven, 10 minutes maximum, uh, and then reduce it to 90%, but I am insisting of, uh, of having an inferior PI. So I am taking the advantages of both technique, but not leaving the patient for 40 minutes, just for 10 minutes, and then to decrease the bubble size to 85% or 90%. Do you usually give uh, oral uh, acetazolamide post op no. No, the problem is not the problem. It is not in the high pressure. The problem we are afraid from the bubble. So the yeah. bubble doesn't elevate the tension, just filling the anterior chamber. I am afraid of the bubble block. Since there is a bubble block and the change of mechanics and the iris is pushed to the cornea, this I am afraid of. So I'm not afraid of the normal rise of tension. I'm afraid of the very high elevation of tension uh, above 60, vomiting from patient, and as as you know. So there is no need to give any anti-glucoma treatment with these air bubbles. 
Uh, do you usually place a uh, contact lens post-operatively? Yes, I usually, of course, uh, most of the cases in our country, I, I should remove the, the epithelium Epithel because there is a great edema. So since I have removed the epithelium, I put a contact lens for about uh, 10 days to have the proper, uh, of course, the epithelium heals within one, two, three days, but I want the epithelium to be completely healed and smooth. But if I have, an, uh, sometimes I have uh, early cases of Fuchs dystrophy, and I have a good visualization during the operation, I do not need to remove the epithelium. So if I don't remove the epithelium, I will not put, of course, uh, any contact lens. Any cases you don't uh, prefer to do uh, DMIX in? Of course, the DMIX, the, the only disadvantage of DMIX that it has, uh, if you have some difficult cases, you may not be able to do DMIX. For example, if you have a vitrectomized globe, the vitrectomized globe is very difficult to make unfolding of the DMIX graph because you don't have the vitreous support. This is one indication for the ZIC. Another indication for the ZIC, if you have a large iris defect and you cannot uh, unfold your DMIX graft over the iris, so this is another indication. Also, FX and anterior chamber mm -hmm. IOL, all these cases, I think the ZIC will be a better solution than DMIX. But of course, as you know, also, there's a new technique which is called pull through DMIX, as if it is a, a ZIC graft and to pull it from the other side as if you are using boozing light and manipulating it with as if it is a zig graph. So in these difficult cases, you either do the zig or you or you or if you are mastering uh, doing a uh, bull through the mic, you can do it also. And of course, if you have uh, with glaucoma tubes, you can trim the glaucoma tubes and do the mic. I have a lot of my patients with previous glaucoma tubes, I have I, I made trimming of the of the tube and uh, I can go with the make, but the only disadvantage in these cases is that the filtering blip may allow the air to escape very fast. So you have to have a proper tamponade and you leave the patient in the operating room for some time. Otherwise you will lose the air through the filtering blip. I mean, a lot of things uh, from uh, different countries, from Germany, and uh, I think everyone is happy and benefit from this uh, lecture. Uh, Dr. Tariq, uh, sometimes when we insert the last uh, big bubble, uh, the graft uh, becomes uh, decentered. So how do you disengage and recenter it again? Yes, this is a very important point. This, the, the question means that the, 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 the doctor is asking is, is working in this field because he will not ask this question, except that someone is working and facing this complication. So to inject the air, as I have mentioned in my lecture, you have to do it in two steps. You have to pass your uh, cannula uh, very slowly under the graft, and you have to be in the center exactly, and you slightly direct the cannula to the cornea, because you want when the air bubble comes out, it directly fix the graft. But if you inject the, the air, uh, without uh, touching the back of the cornea, or if you inject the air in the periphery, this air bubble will displace the graft, the graft and it will lose centration. So you have, be before making the full big bubble, you will notice your centration from this small bubble. If you have the graft displaced, you have to suck again this small bubble and you have to reform the anterior chamber and recenter your graph. But if you have little decentration, it is accepted. Okay. Because it is not a LASIK flap that you want the graph to be exactly centered, the optical center. No, it's just it is a, a, a endothelial sheet, which will make the whole cornea uh, clear. It doesn't mean anything that if you have the, 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 the make graph is decentered, it will not affect any uh, quality of vision. But if you have a large amount of disintegration, you are afraid that one of the uh, demic uh, edges will come over the, 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 the recipient desmet membrane. And this may be a cause of recurrence. So our main concern of disintegration is overlapping of the demic graft with the remnants of the patient in the uh, desmet membrane, which will be a cause of recurrence. So if you have a little disintegration, leave it. Okay. Don't uh, do the process again. But if you have 
large disintegration, you have to remove the bubble and uh, recenter the graph. I think uh, some of the questions you already answered. Uh, is there any way that we can uh, mark the graft with the S or the F sign, but without uh, doing the punch skin biopsy, so we don't lose the other graft? Yes, uh, the problem of the, the, the originally, if you want to, 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 to mark your graft by S mark, you can just flip the uh, strip uh, half of the graft and put it over the other half and put your stem. But this is not comfortable and you have a lot of fluid, even if you make dryness, you will have a diffuse uh, mark. And if you are pushing over the desmet membrane, the endothelial cells will be damaged because you are pushing over the other layer. So this, to overcome this technique and to avoid uh, uh, making stromal window, the only disadvantage of stromal window that you will not be able to use it as a dark graft. Uh, so you can make, uh, make this uh, stripping halfway and a fold and then go under this fold in between as if it is a sandwich and inject a very small bubble. This small bubble will make separation of the two layers of this membrane and you can make your SMR or some advice putting a cohesive viscoelastic, uh, one drop of cohesive viscoelastic between the, the two layers of this membrane that allows you to press your S mark without damaging the incision. So this is, and another way also is you can take the DMEG graft after finishing it, you can uh, have uh, a an, uh, contact lens first and make the stromal st st stamp over the contact lens and then drag your graft over the contact lens and then flip your contact lens. And from this window, you can draw the S mark. But this technique is not easy because when you are dragging the graft over the contact lens, you may lose orientation uh, because it's not easy to have it uh, dragged over the contact lens. So oh, these are the three ways to avoid stromal uh, uh, window either to use a small air bubble between the two folds or to use a small cohesive viscoelastic bubble or to use uh, uh, to be done under uh, over contact lens. Great, great. I think we are over time, but uh, Dr. Sanjab, I think you will allow us for a few other questions. Of course. Uh, some please. questions from the, from the audience are asking, when is the exact time uh, or decision uh, to do a demic for a pseudophagic uh, bullous keratopathy? The exact time is whenever you feel that there is no progress, no, no, uh, no improvement. This is a, a, a question I have always been asked, when to interfere? To interfere when there is, a, when I have a, a patient coming for me with, air, with early post-operative uh, pseudophagic bullous I observe him for one week, two weeks, three weeks. If he is improving, I will give him a chance for a few weeks, few months. If he is not improving, I go directly to doing the, the MEG graph. So the, and, the uh, question is uh, whether it is improving, there is any hope that he will be fully recovered or he no improvement and it is stationary. And I can go even after one month of the operation, no need to wait for six months or eight months, so giving chance, no. Uh, by experience, you will, he will be able to decide this will resolve or not. And uh, when do you say that uh, the graft is fully recovered? Or what oh. time do you, do you say, or do you uh, wait until you say that this graft failed? Oh, this is a, I think the, 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 the answer of this question is not so clear. But in my hands, if you have a good quality graft, if you have a good technique, you will be having the result immediately. I even, I always check my patients three hours after the operation before going home. I'm astonished that I, I will be having a, a very compact cornea after a few hours. So the results are very fast. And within a few days, you can know that you are, you, you have success or no. If you have delayed edema, you have to check your technique, you have to check whether you have uh, detachment of this membrane. Sometimes you can see that the double anterior chamber 
quite well and sometimes very minimal. You have to check by OCT. Uh, so if you have delayed uh, recovery, uh, you should first exclude why uh, is it due to do, do the, uh, the, uh, display, the, the double anterior chamber uh, displaced graft, uh, whether it is to inverted graft. And if all these are okay, I think it should clear within weeks. If after one month it doesn't clear, I think it will never clear. Any uh, time uh, or uh, for regrafting, is there a limit? Someone is asking, how many times can you regraft? I think one of the advantages of the make graft, as you know, the, the, the make graft, the lifetime of the make graft, it's not clear whether five, 10 years, depend upon the number of epithelial cell count at the end of the operation. But uh, I think uh, whenever you have graft failure, you can do it again okay. because, the, because very easy stripping of the old graft and because the rejection rate is uh, very, 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 very low if compared to B B PKB. So I think whenever you have uh, a failed graft, you can easily replace okay. it. But in my, in my career, my short period of experience for about 12 years of doing the make now, I have faced this only in two cases, just replacing the graft uh, once only. And for the second graft, it would be okay. So I think there's no, no obstacle for replacing the graft uh, very easily. Uh, one is asking, how do you judge the proper plane when you do liquid bubble technique for preparing the graft? Uh, this is somewhat a, a, the sense uh, when you are, as I have mentioned, when you are putting, you are making the, the bubble technique, the liquid bubble technique, the first of all, you have to use a sharp, you have to use a sharp uh, MVR first. You just pass it under the iris root and you make uh, this movement gently until you feel there is no resistance that you have a proper plane. And then you go by the spatula again under the Schwalbe's line with this uh, movement sideways. And uh, the, to be sure that you are in the proper plane, as the uh, doctor asked, you should, when you pass the Schwalbe's line area, you will be under this membrane. This space is uh, uh, very likely adherent. You, can, you will find your spatula is pushed inside very easily. So this easy movement of the spatula under this membrane means that you are in the proper plane. But if you have some resistance, you mean that you are not in the proper plane. As much of many techniques, you have to have some experience. You have to feel the tissue by yourself. But this is a small tips that I can offer uh, for this question. Thank you, Dr. Tariq. Uh, one last question. Sometimes when you're scoring the graft, and you do, do you, uh, as you said, the, the side port cuts should be very, very uh, yes. light. Right. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes if you go deep, when you try to strip, you have the uh, other layer, layer, maybe the dual layer. Yeah. And yes. it's very stiff. Exactly. So yes, exactly. Uh, how do you uh, manage these cases? So I mean, you, the, the management is, is from prophylaxis. You should yeah. accustom so, your so. hands to be. As you see in my video, I was even dragging it. I'm not, I'm, uh, I make the first incision and I was flipping the, the strip upon itself and was dragging it. This of course needs some experience and some delicate maneuver, mm -hmm. but uh, if you are doing uh, a, a deep cut, you will be cutting through dual layer. And when you come with the spatula and to make a splitting of the desmet, you will be find the two layers attached. So you have to spend some time of uh, separating them. But if you have a very light wound, you will, it will be very easily uh, stripped. So another important point for the beginners, if you are making a stripping this membrane and define resistance, this is not this membrane. This is dual layer. This membrane is very easily stripped. The proof is a liquid bubble technique. When you inject some liquid, it will make a stripping from limbus to limbus in no time because it's likely attached. So when you are a beginner and trying to strip this membrane and they find the resistance, 
leave this area and go to another area because this another membrane area. can come very easily. The same principles apply to this matorexes. If you are doing scoring and then you are getting the desmond membrane by the reverse Stinsky, it should come very easily and very smoothly. If you find that it is come and go back, come and go back, this means that you are catching stroma yeah. and it's not allowed to catch a stroma for two reasons. If you are dealing with the stroma in the periphery, you will be having a regular surface, which will not allow the make graft to attach. And if you have stromal scratches in the center, this will affect the quality of vision. So you should have an easy uh, stripping because this membrane is very lightly adherent to the stroma. Thank you, Professor Dr. Khatamish. Uh, we can spend all night asking questions, but I think we have a time limit. So uh, uh, I will leave the mic with Dr. Sinjab to finalize the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zibara. Thank you for your valuable comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Khatamish, for the great presentation as usual and uh, systematic approach. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Bara, for moderating the session and uh, trying your best to answer, uh, to, uh, sorry, to, sorry, to manage all the questions. Um, and um, thanks to all uh, the audience for being with us. Now, next session will be as well with uh, Professor Tariq Qatamish. Uh, now, it is supposed to be uh, on April 14, but I think that would be still in Ramadan. So uh, we will manage, uh, we will check with Dr. Tamish the best convenient time for him. Maybe we'll push it uh, after that, or maybe we can do it uh, in a time which is convenient for him. Uh, the next lecture will be DMIC from D to K, a stepwise approach. So stay tuned and uh, just follow us uh, to know the, the timing. Uh, thank you very much for everybody and have a good night. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.